What's going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Captains video ahead of round 23. So second to last week to go of the season. Uh, our captains last week did pretty well. Uh, second overall for the uh, the experts on the um, on the app, which is good. Um, but we had uh, Cherry at number one with a 168. Uh, Marshall at two for a 140. Golden at three for a 69 was disappointing. Uh, Bont at four for a 126. And Brasher at five for an 81. So three of our top five did well. Hopefully you guys had the Tristan Cherry uh, massive score there, or at least got the Ryan Marshall one um, there. So not too bad last week. Uh, I'm just actually having a look. So we're currently sitting 34th overall uh, there and uh, fourth among the... Is it nine? Yeah, the nine experts, which is pretty good. So um, hopefully we can keep that going um, and, uh, yeah, keep uh, putting up some good captains for you guys. So, um, but yeah, we'll get stuck into uh, the picks for uh, round 23. But as always, before we do, if you're enjoying the content around here, make sure you smash a thumbs up on the video. That would be very much appreciated. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're less than 60 away from 2.7k now so if you can subscribe and help us get that goal that'd be very much appreciated and if you haven't checked out uh our very first aflw fantasy pod of the preseason, season that was a couple of days ago me and Jaden and going through uh, a few things uh tonight ahead of the upcoming season so that was a uh, good and uh, he'll be the co-host for the upcoming season which is uh, going to be really nice getting the stats man uh, as we go through the aflw uh, season but um let's get into the captain picks and also as well i do potentially update a few things after post team so if you want my final final list um make sure you check tune to the pre-lockout chat as well um where i give my final uh, top 10 um so and then uh yeah we do any little change uh, update on any changes but uh as of recording on a uh late wednesday night coming in at number one it is no surprise it is tristan cherry um he has been the number one player on form in the last three weeks. It's been absolutely insane, sort of unprecedented for any Ruckman to go three 150s in a row like he has, um, topped off by that 168 that he went last week. He's now averaging 114 points for the season, which is incredible. Um, of his last seven games, he's gone over 118 in six of those seven. The only one below that was against Grundy with a 94. And obviously his last his last four, he's gone over 124. And obviously his last three, he's over 150. The reason he's at number one and the reason I've got him... Uh, Actually, I'll just put him up now. We, we know he's going to be at number two. We'll pop Ron Marshall up there on the screen because they're the top two and they quite clearly have got great matchups. I originally had Ron Marshall at number one um, against Geelong, which has been a great matchup for Rucks, as we know, uh, throughout the season. Just the fact that the thing that bumped him down and put Cherry up was the fact that, one, Stanley's there, which I think is still a good matchup for Marshall. That's why he's still at number two. But the reason Cherry's at number one is because Tim English is obviously not playing this week, meaning it'll be a mixture of what, maybe a Sam Darcy probably go in the ruck, maybe Rory Lobb take some ruck time. I can't imagine they're going to name their, I think their third string ruck, um, Lachlan, Sink, Lachlan Smith or something. So I can't imagine they're going to name him against Cherry. So it'll probably be Darcy as the main ruck with Lobb chopping out, or maybe it might be Rory Lobb as the main ruck with uh, Darcy chopping out. One of those two. So I just think Cherry, great matchup. Um, and I think he'll be able to go big once again uh, under the roof at Marvel. Uh, and yeah, Marshall at number two. So his form has been uh, not as good, uh, but still probably second best in the comp uh, based in his last f uh, probably five games. He's gone 150, 118, 135, 131, and 140. So four of his last five over 130 points. And the other one was a 118. So uh, just going absolutely nuts at the moment. Um, and it's very hard to split um, with these two. But as I said, probably just a couple of small things put Cherry just on top. But I could easily see Marshall outscoring him this week. Um, so and I think a lot of people... This will be a common combo, VC and the captain um, this week. So um, pretty much on three down is where people can might get a bit creative and go a different vice captain. So um, let's go through a few of those. So coming in at number three, had a good game last week. Uh, it is the Bont um, against North Melbourne. So North Melbourne is traditionally not an easy matchup for, for mids this year, but Bont in his last couple against North have been really, really good. So Earlier on this season, he scored 126 points uh, against them. So he had, I'm just getting his stats up here, he had, what, 35 disposals, six marks, four tackles, and kicked three behind. So that game could have easily been um, a 150. So it could have been a lot more. And then in 2023, so last season, um, we all know that he had a massive game against them with a 158 with 32 touches, 11 tackles, and three goals. So, um, yeah, last year, really, really good. Um and, yeah, 2022, we got a 101 with three goals as well. Um, and then we'll check 2021 as well. Um, a 104. So he's turned up in his last four games against North Melbourne. Actually, there's another one from 2021. Detail up here as well. 
Um, no, he got an 81 that one. But regardless, his last four against North, he's tunned up and his last two have been massive. So um, Bont, I like, coming off a 126 from the previous week and a 135 the week before that against Melbourne. Does well in games where Bulldogs generally dominate and I expect him to go pretty well. So he is at number three for me. Uh, coming in at number four, I have got, and I've almost forgotten what my list is. Oh, yes, it's a bit of a differential. Um Got Noah Anderson coming at number four. So um, his form has been pretty questionable of late. So uh, obviously only got the 94 last week uh, against the Bombers, 98 the week before, 85, and then a 78. Um, but it's his games at People First Stadium is where I want to start with first. So he scores there. He went 99 against Richmond in opening round, then a 126, uh, 154, 111, uh, 118, 140, 112. And then 85 against Brisbane. So it's two low scores against Brisbane. Brisbane, tough matchup. Uh, and then Richmond in, in opening round. Um, but besides those two, has gone over 110 in every other game at home. Comes up against Melbourne, uh, which obviously I had a look on DFS to look at the matchups. And Melbourne is now uh, one of the easiest matchups uh, for inside mids over the last five weeks. So uh, Melbourne, very good to score against. Uh, I don't expect any tags or anything because obviously both the seasons for these teams are done now. So I expect there to be dead rubber. So I don't expect the tag. And I think think that he'll go well. So Noah Anderson is my number four. And at number five, rounding it out, I've got Dane Zorko against Collingwood. So really good matchup there. Obviously, we know Collingwood, again, are a great matchup for defenders there. Um, it is at the MCG, so it's not at the Gabba where we know Zorko does like to score a lot of his points. But at the MCG this year, he played Melbourne for a 117. He then played, uh, is that the only game they played at the MCG this year? Okay, yeah, well, from what I'm seeing here, it is. So they've only played the one game in the MCG for a, for a 117. So, but um, regardless, um, I just think Collingwood are a good matchup. I think Zorko can take a lot of those plus sixes. Uh, didn't have a great game last week, but came off a three week stretch of 131, 139, and 105. So I expect Zorko to go big over the ton once again this week. So Zorko comes in at number five. And the thing with this week that probably. Is, Almost uh, bad for those people wanting to make up rank is that because Cherry and Marshall is just going to be the consensus sort of one and two, whichever way you have it. But there are so many good matchups this week for for teams and for individual players. So like there's a good 15 names that you could easily look at putting the captain or vice captain on this week uh, if you weren't looking at Cherry and Marshall. So uh, just going through a few names here. So Adam Trelaw against North. I don't mind the matchup. The only flag for me is that Will Phillips went to him last time and kept into a score below 90. So I think it was like an 85 or something for Trelaw last time he played North, and that was earlier this season. Um, so he went 84 against them. So that's the only worry. Uh, 22 touches, which was, uh, I think, his lowest for the season um, or whatever, because he normally over 25 touches pretty much every week and 30 in a lot of games. So a bit nervous with that, but I don't know if they'll tag him. I'm not sure they'll tag this time. But it did work last time, so maybe uh, they do it again. Um, so we'll have to see. But uh, Errol Goulden uh, against the Bombers under the roof, I don't mind as well. Um, coming off a really bad score last week of 69, um, I expect him to go uh, well in this game. But obviously, slight flag that maybe Essendon look at what they did last week and, and try and do something similar. But I don't know who exactly would go to a Goulden on the wing. But um, him at Marvel this year, so he went a 119 against the Bulldogs. Uh, 90 against St Kilda, which was a surprise, but that was a really quiet last quarter. So um, not too bad at Marvel this year, besides that one last quarter against uh, St Kilda. But I expect him to go pretty well this week. Jack Sinclair, I really like this week. Uh, Geelong, uh, a decent matchup, obviously, as we know, for mids. But they're also, over the last f uh, five weeks, they've actually been a really good matchup for defenders as well, um, which is which is quite surprising. So, um, yeah, I didn't expect that when I looked at it. Um, so I think uh, he'll go quite well. Um, there, um, and uh, yeah, I think that uh, Sinclair, um, regardless if he plays midfield or in defence, I think will score quite well. I'm actually just double-checking that I got that correct, and I wasn't actually looking at Gold Coast or something when I was looking at defenders against Geelong, because um, I thought I remember hearing someone say that uh, that uh, Geelong was a tougher matchup for defenders, but um, Geelong for designated kickers um, over the last five weeks... May I might have been looking at Gold Coast instead. Yeah, I was looking at Gold Coast, but no, over the last five weeks, they're uh, the third easiest matchup behind Gold Coast and uh, the Bulldogs. So, um, yeah, okay, there you go. So I was actually okay, uh, right for the uh, last five weeks. They were a bit tougher before that, but last five, they've been uh, pretty good, obviously. 
helped by the fact that Clark and Luke Ryan went pretty big last week. But if they can go big, I think Sinclair can. Um, obviously, Sheezer won't be playing this week from what we're hearing. Obviously, by the time this video is out, we'll all know, confirm 100% that he uh, that he won't be. Uh, we feel I like against Freer this week um, back at NG Stadium, which is uh, good for, obviously, Giants to get back to their home ground. I think Whitfield will re uh, return to a better scoring uh Ways instead of the, the lower one that he had last week. Walsh against West Coast, I like. Uh, obviously, he can't have got a lot of injuries, so Walsh is going to uh, be left with a, a fair bit to carry. Uh, so I think he'll go quite well. Flanders as well has got a good match up against Melbourne. Obviously, mentioned that with Noah Anderson there. Um, Matt's gone against Wits. I wouldn't worry about this week uh, there. Nick Newman. Uh, West Coast are actually tough for, for defenders, so... Uh, I wouldn't look at him as a captain or vice cap, but I still expect him to be uh, decent enough and, and still a good trade target. I like Josh Dunkley gets Collingwood this week. Same with Lockie Neal. Uh, Collingwood, good matchup uh, for mids. So I think both of those guys will do well. Cripps against West Coast, I think, will go quite well as well. Um, Merritt against Sydney. Jordan Tag probably going to go there. I wouldn't look there. Butters against the Crows. Showdowns are generally low-scoring fantasy games. I can't remember the last... The last time I remember a lot of players going big was when the Crows won a showdown by a fair bit. Might have been like six, six, seven years ago. And I remember there was a few 120s and a fair few tons. But besides that game, from what I remember, most showdowns are, you might have maybe two, three, maybe four people go over the ton. Um, not, there's not many of these 140 scores. They're generally top scorers like a, a 110 to 125 at most. But um, yeah, so I don't expect Buzz to go huge. But Crows, I, I think he'll still go okay. Anyway, I don't see uh, for, who for the Crows will stop him. Heaney against the Bombers will go okay, but obviously just doesn't have that huge ceiling that all the other options have, so I wouldn't look at him as much this week. Still against Geelong, I don't mind. Uh, Tom Stewart against St. Kilda is a great matchup, so he could go massive. Um, maybe just uh, St. Kilda put time into him. Uh, Ross Lyons, sort of coach, that would probably look at that and do that. So I wouldn't look at it this week, but in terms of trade-in option and, and a good score, I think he'll go well. Uh, Nang against the Hawks could go okay against Meek. Dylan Moore against Richmond will go well, but I'm not... I just don't... It'll go well, but I'm not sure. I think there are better options in terms of captain, vice captain this week. So um, there's a few op there's like a few guys here, but obviously there's just uh, other players people have put in. Uh, hopefully Dawson goes well against Port in a tough matchup. So in terms of my top 10 and how that five, uh, 6 through 10 would be, uh, I've got Whitfield at number 6. I did have him in my top 5. I just bumped him down slightly to number 6 there, but I still do like him this week. Uh, I've got Errol Goulden at number 7 against the Bombers under the roof. His form's just been too good this year, and I think Essen's a good enough matchup where he can go back to his better scoring ways. I've got Josh Dunkley at number 8 against Collingwood. I expect Dunkley to go um, really well there. Um, then I've got Sam Flanders uh, coming in at number nine. I think he'll uh, go really well as well. And then I've got Jack Sinclair at number 10, rounding out the top 10. Uh, we'd, we'd, Walsh is probably unlucky to miss the 10. I just do like the other names I've put uh, above him. So uh, yeah, um, a few good options this week for coaches to consider. Um, but I think the consensus is going to be going Cherry and a Marshall, and um, that'll be what I'll be doing this week. So I'll be going VC into Rowan Marshall, captain on Tristan Cherry. I think the fact that Cherry's not against a, essentially a ruckless um, Bulldogs uh, with no English there, um, I think the line is probably a bit higher this week. I'm I'm always at 110. I take one, uh, anything over 110. If it's over 115, I don't even think about it. I think this week it would take a lot for me to take anything under 120. Um I think I'll be looking at 120 plus. And hopefully Marshall just gets it done in a good match. I'm just gets a 130, 140 plus, and I don't have to worry about it. But if he gets like a 110 to 119, I'm this will be a week where I may consider taking it on um and and going for for Cherry Captain. But we very interesting um to see what we do. But then again, it's a lot of points, even a 118. So we uh we'll have to see how that goes for everyone this week. But uh they're the captains for this week. Um let me know in the comments below who you guys are going with with your captain and vice captain for round 23. And if you've got any questions regarding uh captains and vice captains, put them in the comments below and I'll get to them when I can. And if you'd like to ask me a question on Q regarding captains or anything else, uh then head over to ask me on Q, spelled Q U dot com forward slash AFL Fantasy Fanatics there. You can send through your whole team, take screenshots, type it all in, whatever if you want to do, if you've got individual trade questions, draft related questions, uh, question relating to your matchup, whether it be a grand final this week uh, or a prelim final, if you sort of want uh, advice on to what to do with that, then you can send the questions through there as well. And also AFLW Fantasy, you can send all through your questions. They obviously, we're doing content for that. So if you have got questions there, then head over to uh, yeah, ask, uh, askmanq.com forward slash AFL Fantasy Fanatics. So um, yeah, make sure you smash a like on the video uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, as 
I said, we're back tomorrow for the pre-lockout chat at 6 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Perth time, answering a heap more of your questions. Um, so you can get your questions in there as well um, ahead of the second to last round of the season. And uh, yeah, make sure you check out all the content that's come out um, from the week uh, as well. So yeah, beautiful. I reckon that'll do us. So thanks, guys. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow for our pre-lockout chat. So thanks, guys. I'm out. Cheers. <laughs>